Это как уни. Как уни, как это. Он бар уни. 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 Как это? Это пасаре. Чебы. Кансаре. Это кансаре. Чебы. Тут бы шеки. Ребята, уне. Ребята, уне. Уне, эти. Ребята. Камете, урока. Урока. Ребята, уне. 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 Ребята, Дальше. For thousands of years, Bolivia's indigenous tribes, such as the Tisman and Chimani, have lived in harmony with one of the most ecologically diverse and wild landscapes on the planet, a place where the Amazon jungle meets the foothills of the Andes. Small, clear mountain rivers twist and tumble beneath the protection of a thick canopy. Spend one night in this forest, surrounded by an orchestra of nocturnal calls and howls, followed by a day walking the river, encountering everything from jaguar tracks to a variety of insects and plants and animals. Pristine tributaries of the Amazon River, such as the Agua Negra, represent the lifeblood for local tribes and host giant and dramatic piscatorial jungle migrations. Each year, millions of fish called sablo migrate through the spidery veins of the upper Amazon basin. Fish migration, reminiscent of the great salmon runs of the Northern Hemisphere. For eons, jungle tribes have held an intimate relationship with these migrating sablo relying upon them as a significant food source. So important are these fish that tribes have entire mythologies and belief systems constructed around them. The golden dorado migrate alongside schools of sablo, feasting upon the smaller fish throughout the run. The predators sometimes work in packs, driving masses of sablo onto the shallow shoals and riverbanks where they attack in shallow water. Tribes along the Agua Negra believe the Dorado pushed the Sablo to help tribal hunters who wait ready on the banks with bows and arrows. Today, the Golden Dorado is nothing less than a god to many tribes who have long recognized its value to their survival. Perhaps nowhere else on the planet is an apex fish held so sacred. The idea of Dorado as a god makes complete sense when you witness this fish in action. aggressive and stunning fly rod targets in fresh or salt water. Its speed is sensational. Aggressive takes are mind-blowing, and its acrobatics give tarpon a run for their money.
jungle anglers Marcelo Perez and Rodrigo Sales have targeted Dorado for most of their angling lives. My favorite fish always had been the Dorado. It's fast, can, yeah, it's can grab your fast, fly like nothing. So we can say that this place is kind of prehistoric. Yeah. Well, we, we can say that Dorado is the T-Rex. Yeah. You know? yeah. He's a, a killing machine. Here we, you see life everywhere. In the jungle, in the river, in the water. You see since a small, finny bait fish to the sabalos, then dorados, pacus, big catfish everywhere. So it's really unique, it's really special. Exploring remote jungle rivers for new species like golden dorado represents a relatively new genre in fly fishing. While many anglers are forging into this new territory, Marcelo has been pushing the boundaries in South America since the turn of the century and is the mastermind behind Untamed Angling and the Tribal Collaboration Model and Fishing Program. My name is Marcelo Perez. I'm Argentinian, 54 years old, and I fish in the jungle since I was a small child. Somehow, the civilization and the environment where our favorite fish live were destroyed time by time, year by year. So we had to go far away and far away and begin to explore another areas. In 2001, I began to think about an idea, a model of project to open the doors of this kind of environment, of these marvelous places to the world of fly fishing. That idea is about fishing in the jungle with the Indians and all that stuff. Well, most of the people consider me like a crazy person. Yeah. Just Rodrigo believe on this. <laughs> in addition to the Golden Dorado, there are many relatively new fly rod sport fish found in waters like the Agua Negra, such as the omnivorous Pacu. While this fish is best known for eating various fruits, berries, and floating vegetation, it'll chase down streamer patterns when convenient.
many different styles of fly fishing, as you know. Trout fishing, salt water fishing has their own culture, their own traditions, their past. What we found here working in the jungle is something really different from all this stuff. We use different techniques. We catch some techniques from salmon fishing, trout fishing, salt water fishing, but it's totally different. We are opening the road. We look for the for the, for the knowledge of the Indians for going to the future with the jungle angler. That is the most important thing, I, I, I believe, with the natives working together, walking together upstream in the river. And what I feel is that uh, we learn a lot with them. They belong to the jungle, the jungle belongs to them, and they, they really know how to live in harmony here. One of the most important things we have here is learning from them how to live in harmony with the jungle. We are providing better quality of life for exactly. them, but keep them with their culture, with their traditions, and in a way that they are independent to decide how to move it. What, what we found is that the Indians, that the locals, somehow in different ways, different ethnics, consider this fish sacred. They have some myths, some stories, but that fish are sacred. That coincidence creates a point of connection between us very strong. If you can think about it in a poetic way, yeah. you could say that it is not fly fishing who is saving these people no. and, that, and, and their environment. It's their sacred fish yeah. who are coming from the past and saving them and providing them a hope, exactly. a future. These special fish are taking care of their people, yeah. like the people take care of them in the past.